So if you guys are familiar with this channel, you know that I love to play finger picking, playing finger style guitar. But I also know that for some of you, it may be particularly hard to understand you know, the patterns that I play or the techniques uh, that one can use when playing finger style. And my background on this is a bit more unusual because I've started playing classical guitar when I was a kid, which means that for about four years, all I knew how to play was finger picking. I only used to play finger picking. That's what you do when you study classical guitar. I didn't know how to hold the pick, let alone strum a chord or play an arpeggio with the pick. But I would say that for most people, it's the other way around. Most people start learning how to strum first, they learn how to play with the pick, and then eventually they may develop an interest in playing finger style. So for this reason, guys, what I'd like to do in this lesson is showing you three different finger style techniques so that you can see three different levels of playing finger picking. And as always, all of the transcriptions will be available as a tab on my Patreon page. Oh, and spoiler, you're also going to find on my Patreon page the guitar profiles so that you can hear them as well. And included in the membership, there is the access to my R&B and Neo Soul acoustic guitar course, which means you can learn how to play finger picking and all of those fancy chords that you often see me playing on this channel. So the first technique is PEMA, which is the Italian for thumb, index, middle and ring, which are the four fingers we are going to use the snow pink involved in classical guitar. And it means we are really going to play arpeggios, i.e. one string at a time. So a good way to get familiar with this, if you've never tried, could be pick um, a few bass notes and keep the same melody played by the other fingers. What does that even mean? You play with the thumb your bass note, okay, which is going to be either on the E or the A string. In some more advanced exercises, it could be on the D string as well. But with your index, middle and ring, you are only going to play the G, B and E string, okay? And you start with your fingers already on the strings when you play like this. Okay, just a quick tip, don't be too close to the strings, try to find an angle where there is enough room between the wrist and the body of the guitar and curve these fingers towards the inside of your hand so that they don't clash with the thumb. Now for example, you can start by playing the E string and then arpeggiate the G, B and E with your index, middle and ring in this way. And again. And when you're ready for it, you can extend this pattern, repeating the middle finger and the index one more, so that you go thumb, index, middle, ring, back to middle, back to index, like... And then you can apply this to different bass notes. So, for example, you could go E, G, C, and then quicker, you'll do B, A, back to E. So let's have a look at the pattern. So as you can see, on the E, G and C, I was playing six notes in the pattern, you know, one, two, three, four, five and six notes. For the B and A, which are shorter, I was playing B and two more with index and middle, A and two more with index and middle. Hopefully this is not too complicated and it's a good way to start connecting the bass notes to the finger style pages that you will be playing. Now again, this is going to be tapped out on my Patreon page if you need to have a look at the transcription as well. But now let's get into applying these three techniques to something which contains more R&B, jazzy type of chords so that it's gonna sound more cool and more fun from the very beginning. So the first thing I want to do is just demonstrating that by playing this technique, the Pima or arpeggios with six notes, without adding anything, you will be already playing something pretty cool if you use the right chords. So we're gonna look at D minor seven, followed by B major seven, then G minor seven, and A minor seven. So a typical R&B, pop, jazzy type of chord progression in D minor. Oh, and by the way, guys, sorry for the interruption. We'll get back to the finger style lesson in a moment. Apparently, 70% of you, or roughly 70% of you, are not subscribed to my channel, so you watch my videos without subscribing, and it would really help massively if you could hit the subscribe button and also the like button, because these are the only ways we have 
to tell the YouTube algorithm that you want to see my videos, that you want my videos, my channel to reach more people. So yeah, doesn't cost anything, but it helps a lot. Thank you so much for that. So as I said, the technique is the same. I'm just gonna take a little variation in terms of timing, which again, you find transcribed on my Patreon page. And it goes like this. Step one is literally just practicing thumb, index, middle and ring, back to middle, back to index. Like we said, we never use the pinky, plus the thumb really follows the bass note. If the bass note is D, you're gonna start from the A string. If the bass note is uh, B flat, you're gonna start from the E string. But the other three fingers don't move. So in this example, they are playing the fourth, third and second string. And then you may say, what if we want to make it more interesting? Because when we play R&B and Neo Soul, we play hammer on pull-offs, uh, we play diminished seven chords. Can we do that with this technique? Yes, we can. This way, for example, on the D minus seven, without changing anything on the right hand, you can do this. Did you see that my right hand is playing the same strings? I'll go in slow motion. I'm just doing this type of hammer on pull off on the second string but the right hand doesn't change and then after this I make no variation on the next two chord but then on the A minus 7 the final chord I can actually split uh, the two beats of this chord into this which means thumb index middle ring on the A minus 7 no repeat of middle and index and then thumb, index, middle, ring on the C sharp diminished seventh passing chord as well to approach the D minus seven back. I'll do it nice and slow and you can tell me in the comments below if you like this groovy variation to it. now played a bit more groovy and faster it goes this way so as i said this technique only involves single strings the arpeggios. And obviously the second technique would be plucking the strings simultaneously as opposed to playing single note arpeggios. So how do you actually do that? You position all of your fingers on the strings before you start, okay, and you literally play them simultaneously, making sure that you are plucking the strings by pinching them instead of pulling them. You don't do this, you just do this type of movement okay so it has to be nice and soft with your fingertip or with your nails if you use your nails okay so you can start by plucking the four strings simultaneously on all of the chords and you get something like And once you've got the coordination where the thumb is obviously following the bass note on the right string, you can easily change that into a dotted 8 16th note type of vibe where you pluck four strings first, but you, then you reply to this by plucking only three. So you remove the bass note with your thumb and you only use index, middle and ring. So you do something like, okay, one E and da. That's the type of counting. So if you want to practice this type of plucking pattern, which again is all transcribed on my Patreon page to the full chord progression, it would sound like this. want to apply a variation you can do something like this D 
basically introducing the C sharp diminished seventh passing chord. Okay, so now it's time to make it really groovy, a tiny bit more advanced because we are gonna use both the single note arpeggios with the plucking technique, okay? But we are gonna also add some percussions, okay? Percussions is when we hit the strings in a way that we stop the sound of the chords we are also creating a similar sound to what the snare of the drum kit would do. So how does the chord progression and the finger picking pattern become when I do all this combined together? Well, I can start from just playing a first part of plucking with that dotted 8 16th note type of uh, rhythm, plucking four strings and then only three, so without the bass, and then doing my percussion. Replying to this, with just four single notes, like single note arpeggios. But then I add another percussion followed by two single notes played with the index and then with the thumb, like. So this is why it is a slightly more advanced technique. Again, the transcription is on my Patreon page and it's just a combination of different techniques, okay. So altogether, this could go something like this. If I apply this to the full chord progression, it becomes. But now what if I also want to start with hammer-ons on the first chord, like. Followed by the usual pages. As always, this changes a little in terms of vibe when you play it a little faster, right? Hopefully these three techniques will help you start uh, your finger picking journey or improve your finger style playing if you already play some finger style. Remember that the full transcription is available on my Patreon page and if you want to grab my R&B and Neo Soul acoustic guitar course you can now do so on my own school which you will find at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.